is the FA Cup Highlight Show and the long journey to Wembley's showpiece final starts right here. It's the FA Cup first round proper where the game's minnows will seek a chance to beat the elite. Stay tuned for the best of the first round action. You won't be disappointed. Coming up, we're at Fleetwood Town. Can the Cod Army non-leaguers upset the odds against League One's Wickham? Three times winner Sheffield Wednesday were also hoping not to slip up on the West Coast. The Owls faced a tricky tie at Morecambe. FC Halifax Town fancied their chances with the plum tie of the round at home to League One leaders Charlton. And Paolo Di Canio Swindon Town host record breakers Huddersfield Town. Blue Square High Flyers Fleetwood Town face 2001 FA Cup semi-finalist Wickham Wanderers, looking for their first ever win over league opposition. Tony Jones has the commentary. Here's Mannion. He's looking for Vardy. He's been muscled out of the way there by Winfield. Now that's not seen as a clear good goal scoring opportunity, it's just a yellow card for Dave Winfield. It's Milligan, oh he's gone for it, ball was beaten, fantastic free kick. Here's Beely, helped on by Vardy and Brody. Brilliant approach play by the non-league team Fleetwood. Brody snatched at the opportunity that came to him. In by Milligan. Here's Goodall. Mangan! What's well, a fantastic finish by Andy Mangan. And Fleetwood have gone in front. Now, was Mangan offside? It was very, very tight, but it's advantage Fleetwood in every way. They lead by a goal to nil. Now Winfield tangling with Brody, and Winfield has already collected a yellow card. Andy Haynes decides not to take any further action. In by Milligan, oh, back off the cross by this time. Fleetwood also asking whether there was a handball there by Rollins. Frustration for Brody. It's a fine save by Bull who's reacted magnificently to keep out Brody. Did brilliantly to deny Vardy, and look how quickly he gets back to his feet here to keep out the follow-up from Brody. Brody challenging with Johnson, and Brody could be in trouble here. It's a straight red card for Richard Brody, and Fleetwood just before half-time are reduced to 10 men where he leads with a left arm and elbow. Ibe is 15 years of age, and still he goes on. Davis needed to make the save. The impetuousness of youth. Beely. On again by Mannion. It's Vardy, it's 2-0 now to Fleetwood. Surely no way back for Wickham. Mangan, who scored the first, is able to set up the second. Jamie Vardy, who's been in fantastic goal-scoring form. Rendell. Goodall's down in a heap. Wickham want to play on. And Elliot Benyon fires wide. The two substitutes combining, and that just about sums up Wickham's afternoon. Northampton travelled to Kenilworth Road to face conference high flyers Luton Town in the M1 derby. But the Cobblers faced an inspired Kevin Pilkington as the Hatters goalkeeper produced some outstanding saves. And Luton capitalised when substitute Adam Watkins secured a scout for the home side with the only goal ten minutes from time. One of the games of the round saw AFC Totten take on Bradford Park Avenue, who'd already had Richard Marshall sent off when Jonathan Davis drove the Southern Premier Division side in front. 
Things went from bad to worse for Bradford when Michael Gosney doubled Totten's lead from the spot after Ross Daly had fouled Nathaniel Sherborne. A minute later, Adam Clayton reduced the visitors' deficit, poking home Martin Drury's free kick. But their celebrations were short-lived as Michael Charles tapped home to restore Totten's two-goal advantage. Gosney then grabbed his brace with a lovely finish from Davis's centre before turning provider as he broke through Bradford's beleaguer defence and laid the ball on for substitute Stefan Brown to make it 5-1. Bradford's Drury was then sent off, reducing them to nine men, but Totten weren't done yet with Brown adding his second. Before completing his hat-trick within 15 minutes with the assist from Mark Osman. And in the final minute, the route was complete with a second for Davis. In case you'd lost count, it finished 8-1. Totten cruising through their first ever appearance in round one. The Football League's bottom club, Plymouth, entertained Stourbridge in what turned out to be a cracker. Warren Feeney put the Pilgrims into an early lead with this brave header at the far post. But it was cancelled out before half-time as Alan Drake nodded home to level for the visitors, much to his teammates' delight. Ryan Rowe scored this cracking lob shortly after the break to put the glass boys in front for the first time. Few jubilant scenes, which were cut short when Plymouth's player manager Carl Fletcher equalised with 20 minutes remaining with this deflected strike. The Devonshire side were then reduced to 10 men. Robbie Williams was sent off for hauling down Rowe in the area. And Sean Gevis made no mistake from the spot. But just as the Southern Premier side were on the verge of FA Cup glory, Onis Morbesira scored this fantastic solo effort to level the tie. Connor Hurahan was then sent off for Plymouth for a second bookable offence. Stourbridge didn't have enough time to make their man advantage count, but they well deserved a replay and more celebrations. Sheffield Wednesday's poor away form gave League Two's Morecambe hope of pulling off one of the shocks of the first round at a packed Globe Arena. Kevin Keatings is your commentator. Well, it's been a good start for Sheffield Wednesday in this uh, cup tie, taking the game to Morecambe for the most part in the opening minutes. Here's O'Grady, good-looking cross, only partially cleared, Buxton! Can't take the chance, the Sheffield Wednesday captain Maybe the sun in his eyes, it's very bright, just above the stand behind that Morecambe goal. O'Grady's cross only partially cleared, and Buxton fires wide. A dominated midfield, Chris Lines has been prominent so far. 18 minutes gone, Lines exchanges passes with O'Grady and scores! Really good goal for Chris Lines. His first goal for Sheffield Wednesday, and he'll certainly remember it. He started it and finished it in some style. Lovely layoff from O'Grady, back into the path of lines, no chance, Roach. Away by Drummond, back out with lines, fancies it again, and Roach down to save. It was on target from Chris Lines. Barry Roach making sure he got his frame behind this. Heading towards half-time. Sheffield Wednesday might be more than a goal to the good for their first half dominance. Here's Medine. Roach is stranded. And O'Grady volleys wide. What a chance for Chris O'Grady. Awful defending here from Morecambe. Fenton misses it. McCready's out of position. Medine denied. And O'Grady had to hit the target from there. It's been a good start to the second half for Morecambe. This is Lawrence Wilson. Fancies it, hits it well, off the top of the bar. O'Donnell was beaten. He couldn't have hit this any better. Lawrence Wilson just wouldn't dip for him. O'Donnell beaten. It's a good passing move, this from Sheffield Wednesday. Has he got an end product in by O'Connor? Up goes O'Grady, scores! Goalkeeper came, Barry Roach got nothing on it. And Chris O'Grady at the end of a really good... Passing move from Sheffield Wednesday, makes it 2-0, O'Connor's cross, Roach came, got nowhere near it, frankly. O'Grady always favourite and scored. Oh, what have Morecambe got by way of reply, in by Parrish, not away yet, here's Redder Johnson, barge out of it by Carlton, chance, saved by O'Donnell. Danny Carlton denied, 
Smart save at his near post there from O'Donnell. It's a Wednesday head that meant it first. Redder Johnson should have cleared it. Lost out to Carlton. And O'Donnell to Wednesday's rescue. Good run this from McDonald. Ball claims to handball in there. Referee's given it. David Webb has pointed to the spot. Now, was it handball? McDonald, yes. Chris Lines, left arm. Wilson scores. Never any doubt the left foot of Lawrence Wilson makes it walk and one. Sheffield Wednesday, two. Closing moments, Drummond, long range. O'Donnell beaten. And it wouldn't come down for the Morgan player coach, Stuart Drummond. What a clean strike. Stoppage time. Morgan. One last chance. Good shot. O'Donnell with the save. McDonald scores. But no, it won't count. The assistance flag is up. Paul Davison has chalked it off. Gary McDonald thought he was the hero for Morecambe and that we were heading for a replay at Hillsborough. Shot from Alessandra from range. O'Donnell couldn't hold on. McDonald was in an offside position. It stays 2-1 Wednesday. A northeast derby between Blythe Spartans and Gateshead was the perfect setting for a first-round tie, and it was the visitors who started the brighter. Some disastrous defending by Danny Groves saw John Shaw put Gateshead one up, netting his 17th goal of the season. Shaw nearly had another, but a fine stop from David Knight kept the Spartans in it. But Shaw turned provider for the second, laying off to Mickey Cummins, who doubled his size advantage. Chelmsford got off to a flyer against AFC Telford with Aidan Palmer rifling home a wonderful strike from the right of the area. The Clarets doubled their lead in first half injury time as Craig Parker made it two for the Blue Square south side, bundling home the rebound from Max Cornhill's shot. And when Parker was brought down in the box, the referee had no hesitation in pointing to the spot. Dave Rainford slamming into the roof of the net for his first and Chelmsford's third of the afternoon. And Rainford made it four for Chelmsford late on, completing the route with a fine header to put his side into round two. Arlsey Town of the Southern Football League Premier went to Wiltshire to face Salisbury. And the host took the lead through Daniel Fitchett, who hit a great near post strike off Daryl Clark's ball into the box. But the visitors were back level as Dean Sinclair scored a superb volley after the Whites failed to clear their lines. Arlsey couldn't hold on for long though, and after Fitchett was brought down in the area, Jake Reed held his nerve to convert from the spot and put his side 2-1 up. And Salisbury's passage into round two was confirmed as Adam Kelly made it 3-1 with a lovely curling shot. Sutton United welcomed Blue Square Bet Premier side Kettering to the Borough Sports Ground and the game burst into life in the second half as Leroy Griffith's free kick forced a good save from Kettering keeper Laurie Walker. The poppies hit back with Jean-Paul Marner getting the better of Alan Bray before shooting straight at Kevin Scriven. The breakthrough came for Sutton, though, as Fola Orinishi's 64th-minute shot was blocked by Moses Swebu and Craig Watkins was on hand to put in the rebound. And the U's almost made it too, as Craig Dundas's low shot was pushed away by Walker. FC Halifax Town's reward for reaching the first round proper for the first time since their reformation four years ago was a home tie against League One leaders Charlton. Ben Andrews was at the Shea. Johnny Jackson, Charlton skipper with the corner and it comes towards Matt Taylor, unmarked. Mike Finley should have done better with the header. It's a good save from Simon Eastwood. And who was picking up Matt Taylor in the middle? Barely had to leave the ground. Neat touch from Jackson. This is Hayes. Stands one up towards the far post. And Taylor's up again from the back and it's in. No saving it this time from Simon Eastwood. Second time round with the head. Matt Taylor scores his first Charlton goal. And it was really well placed. And just before half-time, Charlton had themselves the lead. 82 places between these two. Here's Tom Baker, the skipper of Halifax, with a wonderful effort and almost an instant response before the half-time whistle. McManus, that's a good cross. Gregory's in there, cleared. 
Only as far as Jamie Rainford and a delayed reaction stop, but an important one from John Sullivan. Through a crowd of players, he must have seen this one late. A shot in the end going behind the back of Matt Taylor. Here comes Garner. It's a wonderful ball, and the substitute St. Juice has got the pace, has he? What a challenge from Chris Solly, just as St. Juice was about to pull the trigger. It'll be a big moment in the game. He must have thought he was in here, Jason St. Juice. That is some tackle from Solly. Wagstaff, deflection on the cross. He's got through to Hayes. There's Jackson calling for it, and Jackson gets it. Johnny Jackson has it where he wants it, on his left foot, and now it's in the back of the net, and even with 20 minutes left, that looks like game over. No real celebration from the Charlton skipper. There's the cushion he and his side needed. It's 2-0. Here comes the corner, out it goes again. Nodded back in towards Hollands, there's no flag. And Charlton have a third, Danny Hollands, with his fourth goal in five games. Aaron Hardy dozing off on the far post, playing everybody on side. It's 3-0. It's a little bit harsh on Halifax. Low rather waiting for that one, and then wading in with a pretty unpleasant-looking challenge on Wagstaff. I think he's going to be in trouble here. And a game that hasn't had any flashpoints now has a red card. We've only had one yellow, but that's a straight red for Danny Lowe, and he can't have any complaints. It's a bad challenge, it's a frustrated challenge. He's going to miss three games for that. Smith with the ball into Pritchard, the substitute, he's got his first Charlton goal. Less than three minutes after coming on, Bradley Pritchard making the scoreline look like a very comfortable day for Charlton. It wasn't for a while, it is now. League two side Aldershot survived a scare in their meeting with Blue Square Bet South side Maidenhead United. Anthony Thomas put the hosts in front after just seven minutes at York Road, venue for one of the first FA Cup ties 140 years ago. But Aldershot made sure their name went into the hat for round two as Michael Rankin tapped in from close range to force the replay. Bottom of the Blue Square Bet Premier, Bath City also came close to pulling off a shock against Dagenham and Redbridge. The visitors took the lead when Sean Cannon pounced on a slip by Femi Ilisanmi. But the host pressure finally paid off when Brian Woodall equalised with a header from John Nurse's cross. Bath nearly won it, but keeper Chris Lewington saved from Cannon and also from Adam Connolly. Hinkley earned a draw against Blue Square Bet Premier side Tamworth, but had to play most of the match with ten men after Danny Haystead saw red for a kick on Kyle Patterson. It was the 79th minute before either side troubled the scorers, with Andre Gray putting the hosts ahead with a low finish. Tamworth pulled level from the penalty spot after Nabil Sharif was brought down. Easton Christie kept his cool to convert from the spot. Lloyd Kerry put the Blue Square North side back ahead with this delightful chip. But Tamworth avoided a shock defeat in the 92nd minute as Kyle Patterson nodded in Paul Green's long ball. Oxford City faced Redbridge in the first round and Declan Benjamin's long-range strike almost put the visitors ahead. City continued pressing in the second half with Lee Steele putting a volley wide and Benjamin's far post strike forcing a fine save from Adam Raffitz. But the lowest ranked side left in the competition nearly stole a winner. Matt Turpin heading in from a corner, but after consulting with his linesman, the referee decided Turpin had fouled in the build up. Paolo De Canio's promotion chasing Swindon Town had their work cut out against a Huddersfield Town side who've posted a club record 42 league game unbeaten run. Gary Taphouse is your commentator. Here's Woods. They're playing some nice stuff here, Huddersfield. This is Novak lining up the shot. Oh, 
Oh, great strike! Lee Novak with his 11th of the season. No chance there for Wes Fodringham. But his field in front. It's going to be Ritchie to deliver the free kick. All the way through! It's 1-1 and it's A.D. Flint. Well, a great delivery from Ritchie on the far side and the ball just seemed to hit Flint as he muscles his way past McComb. It's 1-1 at the county ground. A great response this from Swindon to going behind. Harris with the throw, up to Connell. Now Ferry to the byline. De Vita! They have turned it around. Simon Ferry to the byline, and he had the presence of mind to pick out Rafael De Vita. And it's 2-1 to Swindon. The Italian scoring his fifth goal of the season. Route one here from Huddersfield. Novak! Oh, what a fine save from Fodderingham. This volley looked in all the way. Abelondo losing out here. And this is Alan Lee. And Fodderingham makes the save. Best chance that Huddersfield have had so far in the second half. Now, Ferry, head down, drops the shoulder. And he's run 50 yards here. This is Essahas, and Karush is waiting! What a first touch from the substitute! Essahas, one substitute, finds Mehdi Karush the other. And it's the third goal that Swindon have been looking for. Their top scorer strikes. Karush. Essahas. Now Richie. He finds Ferry. Beaten away by Colgan. Oh, it's loose. It's Ferry again! And that has surely sealed Swindon's place in round two. Ferry's initial shot beaten away by the goalkeeper and Ferry with the presence of mind to slot it home. 4-1 to Swindon. There was no upset at Alfreton's North Street as League One Carlisle United made easy work of the Blue Square Bet Premier League strugglers. Lee Miller opening the scoring after John Paul McGovern did well to keep the ball in play. Rory Loy's spectacular overhead kick doubled the visitors' lead. Alfreton's keeper then did his best to stop a Lee Frank's own goal, but James Berrett was on hand to make it three. And Liam Noble was left unmarked to head home to finish the scoring before half-time. There were no more goals after the break, but there was time for Chris Senior to miss from the spot as Carlisle eased into round two. Blue Square Bet Premier side Barrow entertained Rotherham at Holker Street, but it was the host that took a surprise lead when a corner came in from the left and the Millers goalkeeper failed to clear the ball on two occasions. It eventually fell to Paul Rutherford, who tapped into an empty net. Adam Boys then went close for the host as his effort cannoned off the crossbar. But in an end-to-end -end game, it was Rotherham who got the all-important equaliser when Lewis Graben span in the area and blasted a powerful shot home with eight minutes remaining. And as time was nearly up, Paul Smith's handball gifted Rotherham a chance to make the second round and Graben duly obliged with his second goal. Blue Square Bet Southside Basingstoke made the short trip up the M3 to Brentford and after Sam Saunders fired in a 25-yard free kick after just nine minutes, some fans may have thought they were in for a hiding but it was Basingstoke that dominated for long periods and they were unlucky not to force a replay when the Bees' Leon Leg cleared off the line after a goal mouse scramble.
Time to wrap up the results, and none more surprising than Totten's 8-1 destruction of Bradford Park Avenue. Alfreton and Barrow fell to league opponents. Gateshead won the North East Derby, and Basingstoke and Corby also just missed out. Chelmsford thumped Telford 4-0 to book a second round spot. Bath earned a credible draw at Dagenham, whilst East Thurrock's dreams were curtailed by Macclesfield. Fleetwood with a non-league star turns overcoming League One Wickham Wanderers, whilst FC Halifax went out at home to Charlton. Bromley's dreams ended in a 3-0 defeat at Orient. Luton beat league opposition in Northampton, and Maidenhead lived to fight another day, earning parity against Aldershot. A day to forget for Nantwich at MK Dons, and Sheffield Wednesday just hung on to go through at Morecambe. Shrewsbury halted Newport's progress, plus Stourbridge set up an intriguing replay with Plymouth. Redbridge's cup dream lives on after a 0-0 draw with Oxford City. Salisbury are in the hat, as are Sutton United after winning all non-league clashes. So, what a first round. Fleetwood and Luton have claimed a league scalp. It was eight of the best for AFC Totten, and Big Guns Charlton and Wednesday are into round two. This season's FA Cup is up and running. Bye for now.